When one of the most chaotic forces in the Marvel Universe gets the most powerful object in the Marvel Universe, it's gonna be bad. When Deadpool does, <laughs> well, it's just funny. Deadpool is one of the craziest characters in all of comics, and he's notable for possibly being the only character in Marvel that actually knows he's in a comic book. His constant off-the-wall attitude and lack of manners easily earns him the title of the Merc with a Mouth. But what happens when you give someone like Wade Wilson the Infinity Gauntlet? Well, you get a very funny and ridiculous comic arc to say the least. Having just finished off his 2012 comic series run, Deadpool was due for some R&R. &R. So after the conclusion of the main plot, he's treated with just that. While stealing an unknown object for an unknown client, he's told not to touch the object he's stealing. Of course, this being Deadpool, he does exactly that. Upon exiting the building, he's met with the Mad Titan himself, Thanos, hovering in his legendary Thanos Copter, a hilarious callback way back to the issue Super Spidey Stories number 39, in which he pilots the ridiculous helicopter. Turns out the item Wade Wilson had just recovered is the one and only Cosmic Cube, also known as the Tesseract, which houses the Space Stone. I wonder why the big blue guy wearing the Infinity Gauntlet could possibly want that. Through some amazing Deadpool-level logic, Wade uses the Cosmic Cube to swap Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet with a fake, giving him possession of the Golden Glove. Deadpool explains that he was able to do it because when he picked up the Tesseract, he came to understand the entire universe. Only in Deadpool comics, ladies and gentlemen. Thanos channels the reader's collective thoughts by telling Deadpool that that makes no sense, and Wade promptly jumps out of the Thanos copter. But before hitting the ground, Wade gives Thanos the old Infinity Gauntlet finger blast, and the poor Yellow Chopper is blown to oblivion along with the Mad Titan. Deadpool hits the ground with what I can only assume was a superhero landing, and uses the Infinity Gauntlet to create his biggest dream, a one-night showing of Deadpool roasts the Marvel Universe. A woman in the backstage recognizes him as Spidey, so he just sort of erases her from existence. Just as Mr. Wilson is about to start up his show, he's interrupted by a familiar Birdman, Howard the Duck. Howard explains to Deadpool, who apparently has never seen a roast all the way through, that it's actually Deadpool who will be roasted by the Marvel Universe. Even with near infinite power, Deadpool still finds a way to be the butt of the joke. Howard the Duck makes Deadpool add his name to the marquee as the special guest MC for the night. The two go on stage with the Hulk, Spider-Man, Thor, and the original Nick Fury. Deadpool asks where the funny raccoon is, but according to Howard, Hulk is eating him. What proceeds is a non-stop series of jokes at Wade's expense, showcasing a bunch of Marvel characters' stand-up routines. Wolverine is first up, but he seems far more bothered about the tuxedo, if you can really call it one, that the demon Mephisto put him in than actually roasting Deadpool. For some reason, Wade decided to invite Adolf Hitler, who introduces himself as the star of issue 26 of the roast, saying he felt it was appropriate to invite everybody, but it was okay because he sat him with the bad guys. Cable just tells Wade how much he hates him. But my favorite quote-unquote joke was told by Thor, who just goes on a long soliloquy about how there's a big ugly goat that guards Valhalla, and apparently Wade looks like it. Spider-Man just rambles on a bunch about bad things that have happened to him and the Hulk channels Bruce Banner to use his incredible super superior intellect to make fart jokes, which apparently he has 10 minutes of material for. Oof, crack a window, Hulk. True to his word, Deadpool really did invite everyone. Aside from all the usual Marvel fanfare, save Thanos, of course, Abraham Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt are there, and even Benjamin Franklin makes an appearance to throw some shade at the Merc with a mouth. Probably not how you would have expected Deadpool to spend his time with the Infinity Gauntlet, huh? Well, it's Deadpool, so you should have expected to expect the unexpected. <laughs> Believe me, it makes sense. Deadpool finally takes the stage to crack some jokes while the crowd is howling with laughter. Turns out he was using the Infinity Gauntlet to make them laugh. Jeez, being Deadpool seems kind of depressing. I mean, it already did seem depressing, but just add another log to the fire, I guess. At this point, Deadpool freezes time to address the comic readers directly, as he often likes to do. Even through the stop time, Howard shows up to thank Deadpool for the show. A shocked Deadpool, who's usually the one to surprise everyone else, asks how he's around, and Howard answers, Kid, I was you before you came along. Wade snaps his fingers and finds himself back on the Thanos copter with the big purple titan. For some reason that only Deadpool could understand, he just hands Thanos the Infinity Gauntlet and tries to strike up a conversation. Thanos, not quite the conversationalist that Wade is, just kicks him out of his glorious flying contraption. Wade starts talking directly with the writer of the comic, who informs him that he will not be in Secret Wars because he's dead. What a perfect way to end Deadpool's 250th comic issue. So ends the only time Deadpool got to use the Infinity Gauntlet to date. Honestly, I think it's better off in Thanos' hands. At least he's responsible. 
I think Deadpool would find a way to break it on accident somehow, destroying the entire universe in the process. What did you think about Deadpool's time with the Infinity Gauntlet? It may not have been as action-packed as you might have imagined, but at least in this story he didn't kill the entire Marvel Universe. I'm just disappointed he didn't conjure up a bunch of chimichangas.